You're locked in to Buy or Pulse. I'm David Silverman. Uh, earlier today, you guys got to get a glimpse of Mass Effect 3 if you're watching the live stream or if you're here at PAX. We have a very special treat. We're going to dial him up live via Skype. We're going to throw him on the monitor, hopefully. Casey Hudson, executive producer for Mass Effect. Casey, are you there? I'm here, but I can hardly hear you. That's I'm awesome. my volume. I think we have audio issues. I can't believe this is actually working. I'm amazed right now. Sorry. Good job, guys. All right. So, Casey, uh, how's things in Edmonton? Uh, things are great. The team's working really hard. Um, we're, we're just playing the game. I think our lead designer is on his seventh or eighth playthrough of the whole game, so things are really coming together. That's awesome. Anything you want to say to uh, the hundreds of people here watching you right now at PAX? Well, I mean, we wish we could be there. Um, uh, as we get later in the schedule, more and more we're just really heads down trying to get the game done. But uh, we know that uh, a lot of people are out there trying it out. We're going to get the, a lot of feedback, and uh, we'll be integrating that as we finish up the game. So we're just really excited, and we wish we could be there. All right. Well, let's uh, get to some questions. So people can tweet their questions to at BioFeed. That's at B-I-O-F-E-E-D, and Casey will uh, answer them live. So here's one question from uh, Rich Errington. Will any old Cerberus crew from ME2 find their way onto the Normandy in Mass Effect 3? Uh, well, I'll, I'll get some feedback now. So one thing we won't do, um, just, just FYI in, in this Q&A, is a lot of the stuff um, that about, like, how people are going to appear in the story and whatnot. Obviously, our story is really important to us, and it's important to, to players as well. So we're going to be pretty guarded about um, who you're going to see and, and what you're going to be able to do throughout the game. But uh, you'll certainly, I mean, one of the big things that we want to do with Mass Effect 3 is to look at all the different characters that we've created, um, all the different things that we know that players love through looking at fan art and looking at feedback and, and just all, all of the love for Mass Effect that we've seen over the years. We want to make sure that we really pay off all of these different arcs and have a lot of these characters appear um, and, and give you a satisfying uh, ending to this trilogy. All right. So here's a question about the outfits and armor. So they're curious if uh, the companions are going to have casual outfits and armor, and will the armor really be armor with real protection or just visual aesthetics? Um, so the... Uh, Characters, some of them will have uh, casual outfits. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't wouldn't say that it's definitively a system that everyone has, and, and you're switching in and out or whatever. It's sort of based on the character, and it's sort of based on the story. But some of them will definitely have casual outfits. You'll see them out in uh, different different parts of the game, kind of hanging out in what you would wear outside of your armor. And then uh, the armor itself, of course more so than we've done before uh, in, in Mass Effect 2 or 1, the armor is customizable and uh, it has more of a, a, a stat change that will affect the effectiveness of your armor as you start customizing it. All right, this is a, a comment from Vegas Sparky Rich. I'd like to know what fortunate event caused the selection of my birthday as the release date for Mass Effect 3. Casey, any uh, wisdom there? Well, I think either it's a very popular birthday or uh, everyone who has that birthday has, has, has mentioned it to us because I've seen that on, um, on my Twitter. I, I know we've, we've, we've heard a lot of that around and it's, it's pretty interesting actually because I've, I've never had this before when we, when we talk about a, a release date that uh, so many people have come forth and said it's, it's their birthday. So uh, it's going to be uh, hopefully a really good birthday for a lot of people when Mass Effect comes out on March 6th. There you go. A lot of birthday presents for people. Makes it easy for mom and dad, I guess, right? Absolutely. All right, here's a question from uh, Metal Fur. They want to know, are there going to be any more Mass Effects after the third? Well, I mean, we, we know that there's a lot of interest in the Mass Effect universe as a whole, and there's so many stories that we can tell. I'm going to turn my volume down. Um, and, and so we're, we're excited about doing something more uh, beyond the series with Mass Effect, and I think fans have been asking us for it as well so most likely something will happen but we are we're not thinking about it really um, at this point we're just really trying to make sure that we end this series on a really strong note all right here's a question from uh, well this is a this is a nice question it's a, a heartwarming question for you Casey this is from uh, Chris Zone 
Mass Effect is a huge inspiration to people to be writing art, music, costumes, and props, or fans of the game. How does that make you feel, Casey? Okay. Um, I'm mostly losing you in the, in the audio. Can you repeat that? Yeah, essentially, there are a lot of fans out there who, you know, they'll make their own custom costumes, or we have people making, you know, their own songs about Mass Effect, or we have artists drawing fan art or writing fan fiction, or just general, you know, hardcore fans. How does that make you feel? Well, I think it's, it's awesome when we go to something like uh, PAX or when we're at Comic-Con, um, just, just seeing uh, all the love for Mass Effect. And, and part of the fun is just looking at the different things that people really identify with, whether it's the characters and, and uh, a lot of the iconic looks of things. When we, when we show things that, and the things people ask about, um, it really shows the things that resonate with our fans and then that, that helps, uh, helps us really design the future games and the future of the series to be even better and, and to have more of those, those kinds of things. So um, for us, you know, when we, when we work on a game, it's not like other types of entertainment where you can go out and, uh, and sit in a movie theater with an audience watching your movie or, or go to a concert and perform live for people. In, in this form of entertainment, we make a game and then maybe millions of people play it but we don't really get to experience that until we go to something like PAX. And then we can actually, for the first time, really experience that with, with people who love the game. So it's always a lot of fun for us. All right, uh, we got a couple questions here. I'm gonna just combine them. A lot of people wanted to know about the music in Mass Effect 3. Um, you know, in some of the demos, they've heard some of the themes from Mass Effect 2 returning. In some of the trailers, we've used some Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 music. Is Mass Effect 3 going to have an entirely new score? Will there be some of the reoccurring themes that we'll see throughout the game, whether it be character or like the theme for the Normandy, for instance? Are we, how are we integrating some of the older music into Mass Effect 3? Uh, well, we're, uh, we're not quite ready to announce our plans for music on Mass Effect 3, but uh, we do have some amazing stuff in store for people. Um, I think part of what we're doing with the music speaks to the degree of emotion that the story uh, covers in Mass Effect 3. We're going to places that we've never really gone before in terms of Shepard's experience and, and the emotion of where things are going in the storyline. And the music is really going to support that. Um, I know a lot of people have asked, when you, when you look at some of the material we've put out, we're using music tracks from previous in the game. And that's because we're actually still working on um, the composition is going on um, for Mass Effect 3 music, so a lot of that stuff isn't ready yet. So that's why you're hearing music from uh, previous games. But the, the Mass Effect 3 score will be an all-new score um, that will uh, obviously be inspired by music from, from Mass Effect 1 and 2. But uh, even though it'll integrate some of those themes, it'll be a whole new score. And uh, I think it'll, it'll really help us get where we want to go with this story. All right. Here's a question. Here's a little feedback there. Here's a question from uh, Al Meron. Jacob wants to know: Are there any other plans for other special or collector's editions of Mass Effect Three? So we've announced the N7 edition. Is that it, or are there others? Uh, well, uh, you would know more about this than I would, as the director of marketing, but. Uh, uh, as far as I know, the, the collector's edition is, is the one. That's, that's the one to get if you want the premium version. That's all I know too, Casey. So all right. uh, yeah, N7 is it. Don't forget, uh, actually quantities are limited to that. So if you want to make sure you guarantee your copy, best thing you can do is go ahead and pre-order it today. It should be at all major retailers. Here's a question from uh, Rinji Rene. When are we going to see some James Vega or Caden for that matter? Give the men of Mass Effect some more love. Well, we had a lot of people asking about James Vega, so we, we uh, put an early screenshot out there. Um, James is an awesome new character. You really, as people saw with Mass Effect 2, seeing your first screenshot or first image is one thing, but actually getting to know the character, seeing uh, how we develop their personality and what they're about is, is a totally different thing. And uh, so I, I, I'm playing Mass Effect 3 right now, and he's already a really cool character. Uh, we have some really awesome things planned for that. And then Caden, of course, is a major character in the series. So um, you will, of course, see Mass. Uh, you'll, you'll see Caden in Mass Effect 3, and he'll be a big part of the storyline. 
as well uh, characters like Ashley and Liara that have been there throughout the whole storyline. So um, just because we're not showing a lot of these characters doesn't mean they're not there. Um, we, uh, we're we trying to save a lot of stuff for the game itself, for you to discover it. And then, you know, we'll, but we will be revealing a little bit more as we go towards the, the release date. We'll, we'll show a bit more of these characters. All right. So I'm going to combine another couple questions here. This one primarily is from uh, Lindsay Oblonsky. Or Ab Oblonsky, yeah. Uh, since we found out that there are husks for each species, will there be will, there will, be, the, will the different husks have uh, different uh, abilities? So, i.e., will you know, husks, the reapers that have taken over, say, Asari, are they going to have biotic abilities? And also, someone else's question wanted to know, are there other species of husks that we haven't really talked about yet? So other races that people can expect. Yeah, that's one of the things you'll see if you look at the uh, enemies that we've shown in, in some of the material on Mass Effect 3 already, is that this is kind of what the Reapers do with us, um, is uh, they'll, they'll take uh, living things and they kind of uh, reassemble them. They, they, this is part of how they, they learn about us. This is some of the things that you saw in Mass Effect 2. Um, and they had already kind of done some of that stuff with the collectors. Some of the Mass Effect 2 enemies were kind of reconfigured collectors with kind of human parts jammed in there. And then you'll, you're seeing some of these things as well in the new characters for uh, Mass Effect 3, some of the new enemies. Um, you can see kind of bits of Batarian jammed in there and Turians and Krogans. And then they kind of make these new enemies um, that will have very different powers. Um, some of them are, are really tough, sort of soldier-like tanks that are able to take cover and able to hammer you with melee stuff. And others have really exotic different attacks where they're able to absorb health off of other, uh, you know, fallen enemies or uh, use biotic powers and things like that. So we're, we're able to kind of think about how the Reapers would kind of mash together these, these different uh, aliens to maximize what they're good at and then create something completely new out of it. All right. Here's a question from Cornfed. Will the Elcor or Volus play a bigger role in Mass Effect 3? Uh, can, can you repeat that? Will the Elcor or Volus play a bigger role in Mass Effect 3? Sorry, was that Elcor or Volus? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> play a bigger role. Well, you know, <clears throat> the, uh, the Elcor and the Volus and the Hanar and some of these other characters that we've had um, they kind of flesh out the, the larger universe, and, and uh, we, we kind of have some fun with it. Sometimes we use them for comedy relief, and sometimes they're, they're part of the, uh, the storyline itself. So we'll, we'll definitely be continuing that into Mass Effect 3 for sure. All right. All right. Here's one from Vandal X 187 Billy would like to know, can we get an Omni Shield, like the one the Shadow Broker had, to go with our new Omni Blade so that he can hack and slash his way through Mass Effect 3? Uh, that's a pretty, pretty neat idea. But I think, I think first you, you'll need to see all the things that the Omni Blade can do. So we've shown that it has one attack in particular, um, but there's a lot of really awesome things that it does. In fact, we're we're actually building in uh, just a tremendous number of different different kinds of weapons that work in in ways that we're really able to expand beyond what we've done previously in the series. So, I mean, the things that we're doing with uh, sniper rifles, for example. Um, so the way that some of the, the new weapons have different behaviors, we're going to be showing more of that. But uh, this is where a lot of the, the fun is being had by the gameplay team in terms of developing really neat weapons that you've never had before. And uh, one of those things is, of course, the Omni Blade, which can be used in a variety of ways. And uh, I think I think that will probably satisfy uh, a lot of the interest in uh, having really new and cool weapons. Very cool. A lot of people were asking about, um, let's see where to go. I lost my question. Unprepared. Sorry. Uh, okay. Where the hell did it go? Anyway. So a lot of people asking questions about the character creator. Any new additions we're adding? Any new options like tattoos, freckles, scars, hair colors? People want to know if they can create the various female shepherd options that you have one on the board behind you. How robust is this system compared to the previous games? Well, the, uh, the character creator has to do one thing first and foremost, and, and that is you know, really allow you to be who you want to be. And if you've, cre if you've you know, created a character in the past, 
and you're importing a Mass Effect 2 character, then it needs to really be able to emulate the way you've looked previously and continue that. So they'll definitely be able to do that. Um, we also want to make sure that we sort of add a, a few other uh, options that we haven't had before. So we're, we're doing some things like additions to the different kinds of hair that you can have. And of course, if you've played Mass Effect 2 and you import your character, you, it might have been a few years since you've played that character. You might actually want to maybe change your hairstyle or maybe adjust part of your face that you, you kind of wish you could have throughout your previous game. So you'll be able to do those things too. Bring in your character and then make some changes and, and kind of change things up. So you'll be able to do those kinds of things. Um, and then in terms of the, the uh, default character for uh, female players, it'll work the same as the, the male character because it's generally used for what we'll, we'll show in promotional materials on, in the uh, collector's edition box, for example, and on the, uh, in, in trailers we, we might use a female shepherd. Um, if, if we do that, that's, that's kind of what that's about. So in that asset, just like the male uh, default character, those characters are kind of made custom for those things, and then you'll be able to play as those characters. Um, but if you want to create exactly who you want to be, then you can use the, the customization system. And then we'll also make sure that if you, if you want to still just hit a button and see the previous default that we had in Mass Effect 1 and 2 for female characters, that one will be part of the presets as well. All right. Uh, here's a question from Marky6. Will armor have modules like weapons? So, for instance, can you get grenade belts or armor leg packs? We've seen the weapon bench. Is there an armor bench? Um, will they have? Oh, will they have? Will you be able to modify them like weapons? Is that what you're saying? It'll be based on a, a similar system as Mass Effect Two, uh, but we'll be able to expand it out a little bit. One of the things that we wanted to be able to do is uh, if you. If you think about the uh, customization in Mass Effect 2, you could really make your armor look however you wanted. Um, but one of the things it wasn't able to do was to really customize how how that armor is effective in combat. And it didn't really let you choose different gameplay styles by um, offering different types of protection that you can make choices of as you're, you're kind of changing out all these parts. So that's what we're doing in Mass Effect 3. We're giving it more of a... a allowing the different pieces that you add and subtract to have an effect on the way that your, your character will perform in terms of your stats. All right, here's a question from Nurse Brack, who actually has an inflatable Omniblade as their Twitter uh, picture. That's they awesome. Wanna, yeah, it's pretty sweet. They would like to know, will there be, any, will there be an in-game explanation for Shepard getting the Omniblade, or will you just start out from the start with it? Like, are they going to say, because he went to Comic-Con, he gets an Omniblade, or is there actually something going on there in fiction? Uh, well, we always uh, have sort of a little bit of in-game fiction for things that are introduced new to the universe. Um, so there will be uh, most likely at least something, you know, to talk about new technology, similar to how... Uh, it worked with the, the introduction of the, uh, the heat sinks mechanism for Mass Effect 2. Um, uh, question from Mars311. How is resource ga gathering being changed? I hated planet scanning and mining. Well, it's a different story. So Mass Effect 2 was, Mass Effect 2 really was a story about uh, ac accumulating things in, in, in gearing up, getting a squad, training them up, um, and, and just kind of accumulating a force that you can you can take towards a, a suicide mission and, and getting them all trained up. It's kind of a dirty dozen type story. But Mass Effect 3 is very different and it's it's a war story. And and so the planet scanning that we did in Mass Effect 2 doesn't actually really make sense in the story of an all-out galactic war. But uh, we do still want to have a sense of reasons why you want to go out and take your ship out to the edges of the galaxy and find new planets and, and go down and walk around on the surface and, and find things to do there. Um, so we are integrating, just like we had in Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2, there's a reason why you want to go out and explore the galaxy. Um, but it ties more into the overall galactic war effort and the things you're trying to do there, which we'll be able to be more specific about going forwards. Um, you know, kind of later in the fall, we'll, we'll talk more about the details of 
how you fight this whole galaxy at war concept, but uh, that is that's the big difference is that the story is different. So that whole uh, the reason for exploring space is also going to be different. All right. So we have a pretty persistent person here on Twitter, an autistic teen. They would want to know essentially. Uh, I'm going to change the question a little bit. Any kind of comeback, comeback we're going to be able to give to the Turian counselor who obviously doubted us with the Reapers? Do we get to like kind of give him a peace of mind? Yeah, there are a few people that uh, I think players want to, especially being that this might be their last chance, I think there's a few characters that players want to be able to kind of have their revenge on or, or uh, get back at or be able to say, I told you so. Um, so when you think about how you know, we have fun with building this storyline. I mean, we know people want to do that, so that's a lot of what we're having fun with as we build Mass Effect 3, is just taking all of these little little kind of fantasy moments and weaving them in so that there are all these great little little uh, presents waiting for people when they come across different characters like that in the Mass Effect 3 story. All right, here's a question from E. Terman. Will we learn of the Reaper origins? Ah... Uh, well, I mean, I think it's safe to say that uh, because Mass Effect 3 is about, you know, really your, your, your final fight with the Reapers, fighting for survival, um, and getting closer than ever to understanding them, I, I think it's safe to say that we'll develop it, um, but I wouldn't want to be more specific than that. A couple of people have questions about importing their character, so they just want to know, if I import my character, am I going to be able to change the class, or am I locked in the one I had before? Uh, you'll be able to, uh, I believe that you'll be able to respec your character. So um, you, you'll be able to change class and then kind of redistribute uh, points if you're doing an import. All right, here's a question from to Toa of Pi. Uh, basically, if you can, I'm going to expand on his question. He wants to know if the Paragon rene Renegade interrupts return in Mass Effect 3. The add-on that I'm going to add on is how are they different and what are we doing to enhance them? Yeah, we're definitely, uh, I think people really enjoyed the Paragon and Renegade interrupts. One of the things that we want to do uh, to make them even better is that uh, we know that it's it's kind of easy to set up really fun opportunities for a Renegade interrupt where you're going to get physical with somebody and kind of be a badass. But we wanted to make the Paragon interrupts equally badass, but in a Paragon style. Um, so we, we intend to do that uh, a little bit better than we did in Mass Effect 2. Having, having written it for the first time, these different opportunities for interrupts. Um, I think we learned a little bit about how how we can do them better. So we're going to try and do that for Mass Effect 3. Um, and also just realizing the value of it and why people want to want to do it and where, where it's really fun. So again, it's just kind of about looking at the way that you interact with other characters and find these really great moments when you can you can do something other than just choosing dialogue. You can physically take control. You can you can do something immediate and high impact, whether it's a Paragon or, or Renegade type action. All right, Casey, last question for you. I know you got to get back to working on the game. Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce this person's name, but we've gotten a lot of tweets about Big Ben Sniper Guy, which actually took me a while to figure out who that is. And they're referring to the guy in the trailer, right? So you got the guy in the trailer, he's sniping people in the announcement piece we did. Who is that guy? Are we going to see him again? What's his deal? Give us, like, something. Who is that guy? I don't know. We'll have to find out. We're, we're actually, uh, you know, for a lot of this stuff, you know, sometimes we, uh, as we develop a story, you know, it starts out fairly skeletal. But then we have to start finding characters for different things and people that you come across, um, different stories that will happen inside the larger arc of the story. And sometimes we come across a character like that and we realize we can, we can uh, use that for something. And this is where often we, we kind of mine even previous games is usually what we do when we go, hey, this is an opportunity for us to bring in a character that you might have seen in Mass Effect 1 or 2. And based on what you did, then you'll have different you know, interactions with them. So it's quite possible that this fellow is uh, someone that you'll see inside the actual game. Casey. Casey, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us here. And if you guys have sent your questions to at Biofeed, don't worry if you didn't get answered. There'll be other opportunities. And uh, we have a whole team of people who monitor at Biofeed, at Mass Effect. 
They will answer your question if it's something that we can talk about. If we skipped over your question, there probably was a reason why, and it was probably because it was one of those things that Casey was talking about. We're just not ready to start spoiling key moments of the story at this time. So that's why you're not getting a lot of your questions about, well, what if this happened or that happened? We just don't want to ruin that for, for everybody. So Casey, thank you so much. Keep up the great work. And if for all you guys who are watching at home, don't worry, at 2 o'clock, so coming up in about uh, 33 minutes, we have a very special Bioware store episode of Bioware Pulse, where we're going to show you guys some new items that are not yet available in the store and some special deals for those who are watching. So you want to make sure you stay tuned. Check back here in 33 minutes. For Bioware Pulse, I'm David Silverman. Thanks again, Casey. Reminding all of you guys for the latest news, remember to keep your fingers on the pulse. Thanks a lot.